Now, welcome. Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of the broadcast today. Um, I've got an amazing guest. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Facebook comments and we will get back to you um, or we'll try to incorporate your questions in there. So give us just a moment and we'll be off and running. Welcome to the School of Kingdom Writers podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I have a great guest for you today. Um, Shannon Dunn Downing is the first US Olympic medalist in the sport of snowboarding. Um, and for some reason, she signed up for one of our classes at the School of Kingdom Writers and she's just, just done a tremendous job. Um, it's been awesome to get to know her over the last eight months. So we're gonna chat with her today. We're gonna talk about the book that she's written and just uh, you know how God is using her voice and her, her influence in the world. Um, so stay tuned for that in just a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, if you are thinking about publishing, if you are, you know, maybe you've been writing, maybe you're getting your feet wet, maybe you're thinking about, you know, what do I do with this gift that God has given me with this talent that I have? Um, I want you to go to freepublishingguide.com right now and check out the three publishing paths resource that the School of Kingdom Writers has put together. So this is a free booklet that is going to just give you the rundown on what the publishing industry actually looks like. Um, and what I've found is that once people have this information, everything is way less scary, everything makes more sense, and it even helps people to complete their projects. Sometimes if you understand kind of where this journey is going, it makes it easier to find the motivation to keep pressing on. Um, so once again, that's freepublishingguide.com. Check it out right now and please grab a copy. So with no further ado, I want to in introduce Shannon Dunn Downing. Shannon, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's been it's been absolutely a privilege to get to know you over the past many months as you've been a part of our ARC Year cohort. Um, so you've been at doing our part time intensive online class um, and you've been meeting with me and a small group of writers uh, once a week for since since last September. Right. So like eight right. or nine months. Um, right. And and you've just been just an incredible um, encouragement, I think, to the group. And uh, it's it's a little surprising because you have just such like a rich resume. You've done some incredible things with your life. You're such an impressive person, um, but but you're so gracious and humble, and you would never know it, you know, to just to just talk to you as a friend. So, um, what has your experience been like in the cohort? Yeah, thanks. It's been uh, beyond words, I have to say. And intensive is right. Um, it's been an intense experience because there's so much information that I've learned, and that. I mean, you put together such a comprehensive program. So every week it's just like boggles my mind how much I'm going through what so much information, but then, um, you know, you are like a coach and we're just not only to like receive the information and learn it, but like, we are really like, you really push us to go do it, um, right away. So it's way uncomfortable. It's been super <laughs> uncomfortable, but just the most amazing process because I have been doing way more than I really truly could ever imagine. And it's, I've learned so much. And I mean, the cohort is pretty amazing because, um, you know, we get together weekly as a small group and then we kind of just, we have that camaraderie and um, it just is really helpful to know that these other writers are struggling in the same ways that I am because I feel like, gosh, I am almost not even, I shouldn't even be a part of this group. Like I, you know, I just, I, but I think everybody feels the same way. So <laughs> it goes to show that writing is, it's hard. It's you're in a vulnerable place. It's hard intellectually. It's hard motivationally and things like yeah. that. Yeah, well, and tell us about your story. Um, you know, I guess, tell us about your background and kind of what you've done. And, and then tell us about what you were what you've been working on for the past eight months. Yeah, so my background is, um, you know, I learned how to snowboard in the eight, late 80s. So that was kind of the start of this uh, emerging sport of snowboarding. And it was like, in a counterculture, um, it's a counterculture sport, it started like that. Um, and so I grew up in Colorado and, you know, my, this is a story that I'm writing is a memoir, but, um, my life, it's just like highs and lows and just being in a part of the sport as a girl 
as um, an unconfident girl, I'd say, and then just going through this journey of, you know, traveling and all these experiences um, and just kind of like situations where I just felt like I was put there really by God. Looking back at the time, I, I didn't see God in so much of it, but now definitely looking back, I totally do. Um, well, and you had this interesting experience where you're kind of a double minority, right? Because like snowboarding, <laughs> snowboarding is this new thing. And so a lot of times, you know, snowboarders weren't necessarily welcome on ski slopes or were kind of looked down upon as a second class sport in the ski world. And then you're a woman in snowboarding, which is, you know, a, a male dominated sport still today, probably, but not nearly as much in part because of your work, right? Like you did things that no woman had ever done before you you know, convince companies to introduce, introduce female products and things like that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, basically the only way that it was possible for me to be a part of the sport is along with my friend, my friend, my sidekick, Tina, like her and I did, you know, we knew that in order to have a snow, a job as a snowboarder, pro snowboarder, as a girl, we needed to do a lot of work to build like the sport in general for girls. And then, um, you know, it was important to have products for girls and create a market, something that, you know, one, we wanted to inspire girls to get out there and do it so that they could buy product. So we, then we had to offer product. And um, right. so it was just like building the sport and uh, being a part of it. It's just, it's funny because there's a lot of situations where it was like, oh, no, you can't do that because you're a girl. You can't go off that jump. And we'd be like, no, we're doing it anyway. So it was fun. <laughs> to like have this adversity but it wasn't uh you know we weren't picketing or anything like that we were just like hey we're gonna do that and how can we finagle and and do that because we just wanted to do it we thought it would be fun and then also um you know hey we we're saying like girls can do that too and we didn't know that we could actually do a lot of the things that we stood up, up to do because <laughs> you know now <laughs> yeah you know, at the top of a 60 foot jump, we're like, we want to do this too. But then when it can't, comes down to it and it's time to go off the jump, we're like, can we really do this? And so now <laughs> we have to do this. And so we're now we're doing this. So yeah. Fun. Well, and that's one of the things that I love most about your story is there was nothing symbolic about it. Like you just did it, you know, like there was no grandstanding about it or like <laughs> no political gesture. Like you just wanted to do this stuff. You just, yeah. and so you just did it. Like we just did it. And I it think was, that's such a good model for our young people today. Like, uh, yeah, you know, just, as we perceive things in the world that we want to be different, like just do them differently. Right. Just do it. Like shut up and do the thing and don't, <laughs> you don't need to talk about it and just figure out how you're going to do it and make a way, um, I think that's a good, healthy way. You don't have to be bummed that somebody told you no and just, you know, focus on the no, just go do it. And it was great to have a friend. I, I wouldn't have done half the things um, if it wasn't to the teamwork, sure. the friendship. Yeah. Well, I remember you telling a story that uh, before you came along, there were no female pro boards, right? And no. you convinced somebody that they ought to make one. And they took you up on it, right? Well, sort of. Sort of, um, okay. <laughs> there weren't any women-specific pro models at the time. And so I was riding for, like, my sponsor, um, the team manager, was an awesome woman named Gaylene. And she approached me. She's like, this is going to work. Like, I think the industry is ready for a women's pro model. Do you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, killer. So I didn't really convince her, but she just had that vision and she's like such a whippersnapper woman. And, um, she's like, let's do this. You want to hear the whole story? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty amazing. So, um, so she had me design the board and, you know, I'm drawing, I drew like a sunflower board and it was really bold, like red, a br I have the board actually, cause I have to send it away. Do you? Yeah, I'd I, love to see I, it. I don't usually just happen to have this board, but this <laughs> is it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And so I drew, I was actually like in the hospital room because I had ACL surgery and, um, and I came up with this graphic and I send it to her and she's like, oh, this is killer. Perfect. It's like bold, totally feminine, girly. It's going to be great. 
So she submits it to the company and the guys there are like, oh no, this is way too feminine, way too bold. Nobody's ever going to buy it way too much. So she's like, hey, like these guys at the company came back with another piece of art. Can you at least like check it out? And so she sent it to me and it's just like this. It To me, it looked like throw uh, a hummingbird amongst throw up. <laughs> Like, <laughs> so it was like just these muted colors, like mauve and like mild pinks and t muted purples and with this mm -hmm. hum hummingbird that looked depressed. And I was like, no, <laughs> like I can't, I can't represent that. And I guess I'm just not going to have a pro model because that does not represent me. And so no, let's not do that if that's going to be the art. And so she talked to the company. Okay. She got the artwork you know, my artwork, um, okayed. So we're moving forward with the board. And then she's talking to the reps who are going to sell the board. And they're like, we're not going to sell this board. Nobody's going to buy it. There's no way I'm going to present this to retailers. Snowboard shops are like totally core and their boards are like, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll style, <laughs> you yeah, know, right. those mm -hmm. graphics and nobody's going to buy it. And she's like, okay, Basically what she had to do is um, she funded this whole project. So she took, she used $5,000 of her own money and she told the company produce these boards. I'm paying you guys $5,000 to make them have, you know, to get them produced. And she called her friends at the retail shops, select shops, um, and just put them on consignment and they agreed to consignment because nothing off, you know, no skin off their back. And yeah. so she said, you know, I'll take those boards back if they don't sell. And they hit the shops and they just like flew out of the shops. Like the, the shops were like, we need more, we need more. And it ended up being the highest selling board, single board that year above like all the men's pro models and everything. Wow. And so that really just, showed and proved that there was a market for girls and that gave me a lot of confidence to kind of stand up and say hey we should have equal prize money or hey we need these kind of products for girls and um, a lot of uh, women's product kind of hit that mark the market after that point because it was just proof like oh my gosh like there's tons of girls that really want products for them they want to feel like they're included in the sport and so that's pretty cool. That's amazing. And you know, one of the things that I was disappointed in, Shannon, is that I didn't pick up a lot of really cool snowboarding lingo over the oh. course of the class with you. So, you know, <laughs> maybe next time. That's not that rad, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> is it just rad and killer? Is that all I'm missing? Is there and any stoked? And stoked. stoked. Okay. I already used that one. So we should and be good. Well, you should keep using it like five times in every sentence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll try to work it in. I'll try to work it in moving forward from here. Well, and so you, and that's a, that's an amazing story, which means that you're also like a professional artist as well as a snowboarder and now a writer because you have art out in the world. Uh, but so you, you wrote this book that's sort of mostly based on your true to life experience. Right. And yeah. tell us about it. It's a memoir. And um, yeah, it gives, it's a firsthand account of what it was like to be this unconfident girl in the emerging counterculture sport of snowboarding dominated by the guys. And it starts, my story starts in the late eighties and ends um, at the first snowboard Olympics in 1998. That's where I became the first American medalist in snowboarding. And um, yeah, it's just a story. I also go like a little bit deeper in my search for God and then my discovery of Jesus, finding Jesus. So my testimonies in there um, and then it's just really about friendship, my faith, fun and fearlessness, I would say. Yeah. Well, who's it for? Who are you hoping picks up this book and reads it in the future and, you know, changes their life? I would say it's going to be such a fun read for anybody, but probably like the maybe college age students mm -hmm. could relate to that because a lot of my stories, like, uh, not a lot, but. I do discuss, I do talk about like um, how I was in college and just kind of like weighing out, should I go for this, 
you know, be a professional in this new sport? Is it worth it? Or should I just go for the normal kind of life and go to college and get a career and stuff like that? So I think uh, a lot of college age students might relate to that. Cool. Kind of yeah. Well, and how can people connect with you if they want to stay in the loop? If they're interested, what should they do? If you're interested, check me out on Instagram, Shannon Dundowning, on Facebook, Shannon Dundowning, and I have a website with a blog. That's shannondundowning.com. Cool. Well, and what's been the most challenging part or the most surprising part of writing the book for you? It's hard to keep um, on track. It takes a lot of, um, it, it's just a lot of time. I don't know. It's a lot of mental time every single day and just you have to be consistent and you really taught us to um, get a schedule, a weekly schedule and get those word counts three to 5,000 words per week. And so having a goal for me was everything. I love goals and um, I had to just sit down and write, even if it wasn't good, just get those words on paper and have, you know, the, that gives just some structure to work with when I'm now I'm going back and I'm revising. But um, so that's, that was really hard, I think. Yeah. And yeah. what did you, uh, you know, aside from like, you know, writing the book and building your platform, um, what did you get out of the program? What, what are some of the kind of the ancillary or, you know, cultural benefits that you received from the group or from the program itself? I think encouragement um, to write because there's no way if I wasn't part of this cohort, there's no way I would have stuck with it. There's just too many roadblocks that you come up upon. And most of them are um, your own, your own emotional things like, Oh, this is too hard. I don't understand. I don't like believe in myself enough. I'm not really a good writer. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just need that. I, I needed that accountability. Um, and um Ask that question again, because <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a, that was a great answer. Um, what do you want people to know about the School of Kingdom Writers? So you've spent a lot of time in the school at this point, a lot of time with me, um, you know, and you've also I know you've been following us for a while, and so you've kind of seen the stuff that we put out on social media and things like that. Help me fill in the gaps. Like somebody, what do they need to know that they might not already know about the School of Kingdom Writers? The School of Kingdom Writers is just a full, comprehensive um learning diving full on in to how to become a writer and a professional writer because it's um i didn't understand that it was just such a complete program like you're building your platform you're understanding um the business side of things the publishing side of things like every little detail is covered in your class but you make it really really simple to understand to grasp, to do even the way you teach writing and showing your story, not telling your story, things like that. But it's just so, you're just so in it in an easy to understand way. I really, really appreciate that. Um, there's no way anyone cannot learn, you know, if they have an interest in writing, they're gonna learn to be a complete holistic kind of writer. Yeah, I really appreciate that you you talk about writing as a business too, and a, there's a lot of similarities with being an athlete. Like, it's really really similar actually. Like, there's an emotional component. There's a yeah. you have to believe you're prayerful in that because a lot of writers are just gonna like fall away because they never they can't get past their own like I can't do this. That's yeah. the emotional piece. So. Um, I appreciate the prayerfulness of like how you approach uh, this class teaching yeah. and um, it's, it's been amazing. It really is like you're an athlete. If you substitute athlete or writer for athlete, you're going through the same exact things. Even, you know, when your writing becomes a career, you have to balance your work with like media things and speaking, right. and writing so people, writers just want to write, but you might not understand that you're also going to have to do like media, like you have to right. promote yourself like an athlete would. So, Yeah, no, that's, that's a killer answer, Shannon. I'm stoked to hear it. Yeah. Rad. Rad. Yeah. Great. 
Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. <laughs> so uh, how optimistic are you moving forward? Obviously, you still have some work to do. You're kind of in the revision f f phase of your manuscript now, but you're, you, you came in with like some platform already, like a lot of Instagram followers and things like that. How optimistic are you about the space that you're in now and, you know, moving forward into the next steps and really, you know, making this book a thing? I am very optimistic because you're my coach. You're going to tell me what to do if I go, <laughs> <laughs> if I go wayward, you're going to pull me aside and say, Hey, we got to do this. So I'm really, really confident. I'm a hundred percent confident because you're my master Brad. Well, and <laughs> let's not get carried away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the star Wars sense. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, you know, I, I feel like, uh, it's, this is a fun story. And so even if I can't write this perfectly in the end, somebody's maybe, maybe I can, I don't know, hopefully. Um, but even if I can't, somebody's going to help me because this story is really cool. And I love that. Um, you, you kind of like approach you're you're teaching this class to like in the novel form right so that's just a fun way to read a story and um my story kind of fits into that structure yeah um, so i feel confident somehow it's gonna work out it's gonna be great um i don't know exactly how that's gonna work out but i feel good about it cool cool and how has your understanding of writing changed over the course of the program so you came in um and i don't think you would have considered yourself a writer before this <laughs> but but something was like you know tugging at your heart i need to write this down how has your understanding of like calling or you know the interplay of your story and the holy spirit changed through the program i feel like it's it not hasn't necessarily changed focus but just given me more of a um the importance of telling my story, the importance of how God touched my life and, um, and to put it in a fun way is just cool. But I think God for out of me, it's like every person's different, but out of me, it's like I can present Jesus within a really fun, exciting story. And that's just really how my experience has been, you know, it's not, it was really fun to be a part yeah. of snowboarding. God was a part of my life. He is a part of my life. Um, so I'm just sharing to other people how, how that looked like in my particular life. And so I'm just sticking to that right now. And, you know, if in the future God has an, another plan or, you know, er everything with God's like evolving and he's always going to have the next plan. So yeah. I don't really need to think about that next plan just yet. I'm just kind of sticking and focusing on this story and kind of enjoying the process of it. Yeah, I love that. Just being obedient one step at a time, right? And that, well, that's that's rad, Shannon. So how can people, <laughs> one more time, how can people connect with you um, and, and why should they connect with you? Just, uh, I I love, people to connect with me. I love the conversation. So connect with me on Instagram, shannadundowney.com or shannadundowney. Facebook is the same, shannadundowney. And my website, shannadundowney.com, where I just be a part of my journey on um, being a newbie writer and posting blogs. And hey, just uh, I would really love it because that'd be encouraging to me that anybody reads anything I put out right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. And you have some really good blogs. I've read, you know, I've read your <laughs> blogs as we went along and I've been encouraged or inspired and um, you've made me reconsider my life in some ways. And so that's awesome. So Shannon Dundowning, thank you so much for being a part of our cohort. Thanks so much for um, just, just being an encouragement to the world and for being a part of my podcast today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. Cool. Awesome. So I'll be stoked to share this with other people in the future. And uh, so once again, that's uh, Shannon Dunn Downing. You can find her at shannondundowning.com. And that'll uh, direct you to all those other locations that she mentioned as well. Dunn is D-U-N-N. -N. Um, so please connect with her. Please connect uh, with our other cohort students as well. I'm just 
so excited to see, you know, where these guys go from here. Um, you know, when we talk about the School of Kingdom Writers, we talk a lot about our program, right? Because that's, that's my everyday focus is thinking about, uh, you know, where are we going to put students? What are we going to teach them? And those kind of things. And so, you know, if you're a part of our prayer list, uh, which you should be, if you're not, you can do that at sokw.org slash subscribe. Um, if you're part of our prayer list, you're probably seeing those kind of things all the time. But what really gets me going, what really keeps me mo moving is to think about all of the people that are going to be impacted by our students. You know, my life is about impacting the students, but th the only reason that that's valuable is because they're going to in turn become ministers that impact tons and tons of other people beyond them. So check these guys out, follow their social media and things like that, and just see where the Lord takes them, see how the Lord uses their, their messages. And, uh, you know, we, it's hard to predict exactly where anyone will go. Some of them will achieve big incomes, er, big outcomes rather, and, and others will, um, you know, affect small pockets of people in, in huge ways. But we're just curious to see, we're excited to see. So this is a way that you can join us on that journey. So thanks again to Shannon. And once again, if you're getting into writing, um, there are two things I want to tell you about. The first one is the free publishing guide, which you can get at freepublishingguide.com. That's gonna break down how people publish. So if you're sitting here thinking, I'm thinking about writing a book, or maybe you have a manuscript, but you don't know what to do, and everything seems confusing and like a scam. Well, a lot of it is confusing, and a lot of it is a scam, but it doesn't have to be. So uh, get that free handbook, and that's going to be helpful to help you just break down and see what's what and make a good determination for yourself how you want to move forward. The other thing that you should check out is the Kingdom Writers Guild, which you can do at kingdomwritersguild.org. Um, and that's just a community of kingdom-minded writers that are serious about changing the world for Jesus and using their writing to do so. So we've got some courses going up there as we speak. Um, we've got a forum and some other ways that you can collaborate with other people. So check that out. And we'd love for you to be a part of it. So thank you for watching my podcast today. Thanks for joining me and Shannon. Um, and we'd love to see you around. So be blessed and have a great week.